So maybe you get done watching this video and you say, it doesn't matter anyway because I don't have $100. Well, I have a message for you. Bow fishing requires some physical demand. So if you're capable of bow fishing, you're capable of mowing someone's yard, raking leaves, shoveling snow, washing windows. Um, those are all things that I did when I was younger when I needed to earn some money. So if you need $100, go knock on some doors, get to know some people, do some work, and earn it. So I'm hanging out here on my couch, playing around on the laptop because we're working on a project. I see a lot of people, I don't really want to say complain, but they kind of complain on social media. And they say, boy, I really want to try bow fishing, but I can't afford it. So I believe that anybody can afford to bow fish. Um, and we're going to try to demonstrate that in this video. So in this building a bow fishing bow on a budget I have two goals I'm going to try to accomplish one I'm going to try to build a complete bow fishing rig for under one hundred dollars and then the second thing I'm going to try to accomplish is I'm going to try to build a complete bow fishing rig for free alright well before we move ahead to finding a bow I want to talk about some of the features that I look for in a bow fishing bow. Got a couple of them sitting here next to me. This is a nice budget bow that I picked up. This is a PSE Nova. I got this for $75 in pristine condition. Um, things that I look for in a bow fishing bow. Number one, I want a long axle to axle. This one's close, it's a little short. Compared to the bow that I normally shoot, um, yeah, this is what I like, long axle to axle. The second thing that I look for is a round wheel, a round cam. I want that round cam because it gives me a very smooth draw. The third thing that I look for is a high brace height, here to here. The reason I want a high brace height, this one's even better, is because it's very very forgiving on the shot those uh, a lot of the shots that we do if you look at our other videos when we're actually out bow fishing we have a lot of quick very fast very body in motion kind of shots so long axle to axle is great because it's very forgiving it's also great for finger shooting um, high brace height is also very forgiving uh, and then the last thing that I look for in a bow fishing bow is a straight limb. Now my PSE target bow doesn't have a straight limb on it, it's a recurve. And the difference in the feel between these is this is a very smooth, very, uh, you don't feel the shot much with a straight limb. With a recurved limb where it curves here, has a little more spring to it. The bow has a little more jump in your hand. So. I prefer a straight limb, however, this bow's worked out really well for me. So when we try to find a bow here for our project bow to build, going to try to make sure that it has um, those four criteria in it. Now, as far as getting one for the free bow build, the most important feature with the free bow is that it's actually free. All right, so playing around finding bows, um, I'm going to show you a few that are outside of the budget just because I know some of you are going to watch this video who are already bow fishing and looking for bows like this at the right price. So I want to show you that they do exist out there. You just have to shop for them. 
Uh, the first one here is an Oneida Eagle. It looks a lot like it's probably a screamer. It's got the it's got the outer limbs on it that are wood and a screamer or an H500. Very nice looking bow. Two hundred dollars. Here's one that says Oneida Eagle. This is about an hour and a half south of me. One hundred and thirty dollars. Looks like it's probably some sort of tomcat. Um, back to what I was talking about with the straight limb and the round wheel. Look at that baby right there. There's a PSE and that PSE right now opening bit. Oh, buy it now. Fifty-eight dollars. We could make this one work for our budget bow. I'm pretty sure. This one says it's a Hoyt, but it's not. It's actually a PSE. Nova, that's a target bow. Look at that sweet blue anodized riser. And it has zero bids. It's currently at $29.99, two days left. That is a really cool bow. PSE Spirit, again, this has a round wheel design, straight limb, very similar to the Nova I showed you earlier. This is $40, and this is right in my location. This would be a very easy one to pick up and build for this project at $40. Here's a recurve setup. Now, I know we didn't talk about recurves. We're looking at compounds. I am a compound fan. I have nothing against recurves. This recurve is a full setup. It's got an AMS bottle on it, which if you're new to bow fishing, it's just another type of system to handle the line and handle the shot. The recurve bow. It's a Pearson. $69.95 opening bid. Zero bids on it and free shipping. All right, here's another bow, PSE Mach Flight 4, $85. It's a little high price for what we want to do right now. But what I want to show you on this bow, I want to show you this cam. This cam is not a round wheel. With my torn rotator cuff in my right shoulder, I probably could not draw this back. It would tear it even more. This just looks painful to me to look at. So this kind of thing I would absolutely avoid with your bow fishing shopping. So here's, these are some cool examples of things that I found today. Um, I want to give you some variety. We clearly found some that could stay within the budget. There's some Oneidas on here that I know a lot of you guys are interested in that are at the right price. And that's really exciting too. What I did find here is a, a listing for this really cool bow right there. This is an American archery. I haven't seen a bow like this before and this bow is $35. So this particular bow is the bow that I'm going to select to do this build with for a couple of reasons. One, it's a super cool looking bow so I'm gonna like to own that anyway. It's like just begging to come live with me. The price is right and this guy's got and Oneida Screaming Eagle in really good condition for 80 bucks. So I'm going to contact him and see if I can make this happen. Um, this is the right kind of deal to find because he doesn't want emails. He doesn't want texts. He probably doesn't know what these are worth. So I'm going to give him a call. All right. So I had a very productive phone call with Mark. And here's the situation. I'm in Michigan. Mark is in Wisconsin. And it took a little bit for me to convince him to ship bows to me because he doesn't want to get scammed. He's really leery of doing any of this online stuff. Um, but if you can find those people who are leery of online stuff, they don't really know what things are selling for. So in this case, this is a, 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 an advantage for me in, in scoring this budget build. All right, so looking around on eBay, um, looking for some spinners, that because that's my preference as a spinning reel looked for some Zebco 808s um, I found a couple two-pack deals here one is a, a catfish model but it's still an 808 and the other I don't know what they're targeting but it's still an 808 these would be great reels uh, but they're already charging $11 for shipping uh, but then over here I found a, a Shakespeare TI-20 this reel is brand new for $14 with free shipping, so definitely have to buy the TI-20 for $14. Okay, so how do we mount the reel to the bow? Well, we use what's called a reel seat. So I've been looking around for reel seats, and if I filter it down to 
lowest price and look for US only because there's a whole lot of Chinese made real seats out there. Um, I see that I'm, my timing is perfect here for a $14 real seat made specifically for bow fishing. So this is also going to fit well within the budget so we'll pick this one up too. Alright that reel comes with some 20 pound test line on it which we could probably do a lot bow fishing with 20 pound test line but I want to shoot a little heavier line than that so we're going to move up to a 200 pound test line because I found this really great deal for $10 uh, this Brownells spool is what I shoot off of most of my reels. I've had great luck with it, so definitely fits within the budget. All right, well, for tonight, um, that's what we're going to do for equipment. I still have to find an arrow. Um, you know, I was looking for a deal on arrows on eBay. I didn't find anything that, that was budget-priced, and... Um, Pretty good sale on, on a couple arrows over at Bow Fishing Extreme, but by the time you add shipping on to them, um, then all of a sudden it's maybe not quite as budget priced as I want to do for this <clears throat> video. So I'm going to check some more local sources and see if I can get that price even lower before we move ahead with any more equipment purchases here. Alright, one more thing I thought about with this build, and I'm not going to be able to tell if I need to buy it or not until I actually have the bow is whether or not I'm going to put an arrow rest on the bow. It's going to depend on how the riser is shaped as to whether or not I use an arrow rest or not or I just pad the shelf that's there um, but that may be some additional cost that we still need to try to fit in to stay under our hundred dollar mark. Um, I'm really excited to be doing this project. I feel like this is information that um, will be beneficial to a lot of people who are just looking to start out bow fishing, just looking to get out there and have some fun. So once my parts start arriving, we'll start putting this thing together and we'll give you some tips on all of that. And once we get it put together, we'll get out there by some water and shoot some fish. So stay tuned. All right, so I'm on the road headed to look at another bow. Um, long story short, my really cool looking wooden bow that I wanted to get from Wisconsin didn't work out so we'll leave that one at that uh, sometimes that happens when you're doing a deal sometimes things fall through so going to look at another one tonight that's a really good deal uh, it's a dart and bow $25 and um, very excited about it hopefully it works out the guy sounded like he would even take less than $25 for it so I might, I might get out of there by giving him a $20 bill and uh, having a pretty cool bow in exchange for a little piece of paper. All right, I honestly felt a little bad offering the guy less money, but from our phone conversation, I knew it was possible. I probably could have offered him a $5 bill and got this bow, but I gave him a $20. $20 bill for this dart and bow that's going to be a great project bow for us. All right, well, it's Memorial Day weekend. I've got a little bit of time to work on this project and Monday on Memorial Day we're actually going to go bow fishing and I'm hoping to take these budget bows with me to have some fun on the water. The $100 or less budget bow ended up being this really cool Darton 300WX. It meets my criteria in a lot of ways for a bow fishing bow. Um, long axle to axle, it's 43 axle to axle which is the same as my XLD and um, it's got a fairly high brace height about 8 inches, it's got a straight limb and almost a round wheel. It's not quite round and the way that that affects it is that the draw catches right there. Instead of being here and just smooth it's got a catch right here. But as I'm going to say multiple times, when we're buying a bow on a budget, sometimes we have to make compromises with the equipment in order to be able to get onto the water and have fun bow fishing. So, this 300WX scored that baby for 20 bucks on Craigslist. We've got our reel, this Shakespeare T3 
TI-20, $14. Got a reel seat, a game winner bow fishing reel seat, looks like any other standard aluminum reel seat out there, $13.99. We've got, okay, $7 rest, right? Was it $7? $7.99 according to my notes. Here's what happened to the $7.99 rest. It was a black octane hostage and my wife has that on her bow now. So she didn't like this octane hostage rest that I got her because the pink didn't quite match the pink on her bow. So we're going to put this pink rest on our bow and I'm still going with the $7.99 price because that's what I paid for the rest for that bow, even though it got confiscated. And last but not least, our line, $9.99, and our arrow. I was actually surprised with the arrow. I saved this for last because I was surprised that I couldn't get an arrow at a better price. $15.18 was the cheapest that I could find a bow fishing arrow that was all set up. Got a slide on it. This is the Cajun Piranha. It's got that Cajun long barb point. Ought to work out really well for us. All right, so let's take a little bit to talk about our free building a bow fishing bow on a budget bow. The reason I'm building a free bow is because I want to make a point. And that point is you don't need a lot of expensive equipment to get out on the water and enjoy bow fishing. To those of you who have expensive equipment, I'm not jabbing at you. If you can afford it and it makes you happy, that's a good thing. But there's a lot of people out there who can't. They can't afford it. They want to try bow fishing. They look at the new equipment and they say, I could never afford to do it. I want those people to know that they can afford to do it. There's ways for them to enjoy bow fishing. So, our free bow has a story behind it. Jeff Diamond donated the bow for this project. I contacted Jeff about it because I've seen him on Facebook groups, bow fishing groups there, respond to people who are looking for a bow. And someone will say, I'm looking for a cheap bow. Does anyone have something I can use? And Jeff responds and he says, yeah, I have some bows. Come get one. Well, they want to know what kind of bow it is. They want to know what it looks like. And I don't think anybody ever comes and gets a bow from Jeff, even though he's offering them and sometimes for free. Um, so when I contacted him, he said, well, what are you looking for? I said, Jeff, I want you to give me the oldest, ugliest bow that you have. And he did. He came through with flying colors because this baby is old and ugly. I can't tell you what it is. It has no labels on it. I don't recognize the riser. The only indicator might be the grip shape right there for any of you out there who um, are familiar with this, probably 1980s bow. And even though it's ugly, it meets my needs in a lot of ways and misses in a couple of ways too. Um, number one, long axle to axle. This baby's 41, so it's just a little bit shorter than my XLD, but it's still a great length for bow fishing. High brace height of 8 inches. It has a recurved limb. It's going to create a little bit more shock in my hand. It's going to make the bow jump a little more. And an almost round wheel, but not quite round. So this baby draws, this draws hard, even though on my scale this draws at 53 pounds right now, which I'm not going to back it down anymore because as you can see, the limb is already back down as far as I'm comfortable with. 55 on my XLD is super smooth. 53 on this is a little harder. So a little harder draw kind of catches right there, a little long for me, but you know what? You got to make compromises if you're going on a budget. You got to make compromises with your equipment and get on the water and have some fun. It's a little long. I don't really like the draw length, but it's got a lot of, or the draw cycle. Um, but it's got a lot going for it. 
as a bow fishing bow and I think that this one's going to stay with me for a while. So I'm going to put this together with the parts that are behind me. So who else contributed here? Brian Wood contacted me. Brian said, do you still use Zebco 808s? I said, yes, I do. He says, well, I have one. Do you want it? I said, sure. What do you want for it? He says, I'll just mail it to you. So Brian Wood donated this beautiful Zebco 808 bow fisher that we're going to mount on our free bow. My buddy Tommy Glover, Tom donated this muzzy reel seat. He also had a rod attachment for it. Now we didn't put a rod on our other bow. Um, what this does is it helps our line stay straight out from the reel, especially when you're reeling it back up. Helps it feed into the reel better. It's not necessary, but I like to use them. And then, a few years ago, Jeff Diamond, again, Jeff gave me this arrow. It looks like it was probably a, I'm going to guess at this, maybe a Gene Davis 4 barb. Um, great arrow we were talking about fish getting off he said this one's got a lot of holding power why don't you try it out he's right about that however it's slow because you got to take the point all the way off in order to get the fish off so here's our free arrow all set up with the safety slide and we got the bow we got the reel we got the reel seat the one thing that we don't have is an arrow rest but that's okay because this shelf right here is going to be my arrow rest because that's flat and pretty close to a 90 degree angle. Now because this is set back just a little bit, I'm going to have to shim this out. So the cheapest way for me to do this that I can come up with right now is I'm going to put a, some flat folds of duct tape right against here and I'm going to wrap this with electrical tape and shim that out to where I need it because let's face it, if you're the kind of person who's thinking about bow fishing, you probably already have duct tape and electrical tape in your house, so we don't really need to factor that into the cost. Um, we'll see how that turns out. That's going to be a little bit of a project. One other thing that I got to tell you about this bow, full disclosure about the whole free thing, is sometimes you get equipment for free and you still might need to do a little bit of work on it. So this bow um, actually was missing an insert right here and it had a big old hole that threads that I couldn't match up with anything so over the past couple days I epoxied a uh, 516 24 insert into there so I guess there's some cost in that I already had them so two dollars maybe if that but uh, I'm still calling it free so I'm gonna get this free bow put together and I'm gonna use that and my $100 or less budget bow coming up in a few days and hopefully we can get on some fish. All right, with a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of test and tune, I got these both shooting pretty good. Um, without boring you with all that, because this video is about cost, it's not about tuning a bow fishing bow. Um, I like to use a an old muzzy head with no barbs on it. So I can shoot it into my target and obviously the barbs aren't catching. so. Um, yeah, these are both shooting pretty good. Good enough. Um, one thing I didn't touch on was our grand total cost on our $100 or less building a bow fishing bow on a budget bow. Our $100 or less bow came in at $81.15. So that's what that bad boy cost with the beautiful arrow rest. Mm nice colors actually this this setup looks really nice you know if you're worried about the way it looks that looks really nice but yeah the Darton 300 WX is throwing arrows pretty good um, I still gotta tape the other one up but here's what I did I have I have parts I have silicone I could put on this I'm doing this to make a point and my point is you can use electrical tape which you already have and it fits the budget so that's what we're doing the budget Dacron string, really easy to remove, especially if you have another one, which I do. Um, I could slip some silicone on there. But for this project, we're going to use electrical tape on both bows to cushion the fingers. I got quite a bit down here because when I was first learning to shoot a bow back in 1985, I shot three fingers under the arrow. 
pretty much what I still do. Three fingers under the arrow. Until I've been outside, I got lots of crud on me. 80 some degrees today. It's mid 80s. And uh, the fish are going to be popping like crazy. Wish we could go bow fishing today, but we can't. We got to wait a few days and we can put these to the test, get them on the water, and see what they do. So, our free bow. I had to modify the free bow a little bit. <clears throat> I had to epoxy an insert into here, 516-24 insert. I had to epoxy that into there. It slipped a little bit um, when I was turning the reel seat and tightening that down. So I put a flat washer and a lock washer on here just to give it a little bit more tension to try to hold everything in place. So we'll see how that holds up. Uh, the free bow shoots really nice. I'm shooting off the shelf, and this is how I modified the rest right here. A little bit of stuff you probably already have at home. Some duct tape and some electrical tape. I played around with the duct tape shim and uh, got it to the right thickness where the arrow was sitting in line here pretty good. Just wrapped it with some electrical tape. I mean, it's easy to do. Is it pretty? No. Is it cost effective? Yes. Does it fit the budget? Yes. Does it get us on the water on Monday with the budget bow so we can shoot some fish? Yes. That's the most important part. In fact, while we're on that topic, just imagine if I could actually make a homemade quiver to hold my arrows so easily. Can you imagine if it could be this simple that I could just have some tape, wrap it around, and have myself a quiver to hold my arrows? Oh my gosh, look at that. Take our Swiss Army knife out of the pocket. We won't factor that into the budget because you should already own one of these anyway. We'll give ourselves a little extra tape here and we'll fold it over on itself. Watch this. This is the tricky part here. Of course I'm kidding. There. Now we got ourselves a little pull tab. So when we need to release our quiver, we can just release our quiver. Guess I could have made that one wrap less. Take our arrow off, put our quiver back on. Jeff, I'm pulling your I'm pulling Jeff's paint job off his bow. Jeff, I'm sorry. But thanks for donating the bow, because it's pretty cool. Put our quiver back on with our pull tab. How about that? We can keep it all wrapped up nice with a little bit of electrical tape. Alright, so Free bow is actually a really sweet shooter. It shoots really smooth, really smooth. I expected this recurve limb to jump more than it does, and uh, it feels really good. So, looking forward to Monday. I guess we'll check back in when we're on some fish and we're ready to test these babies out for real. All right, it's a beautiful day today on Memorial Day. The sun's shining mid-morning can't wait to get on some fish to try to put these budget bows to the test I've got two-thirds of my family with me today my wife Brandy and both my boys and what we're going to do is we're going to try to find ditch fish in the spirit of doing this on a budget we did not bring a boat um, it's important for you to note that you don't need a boat in order to boat fish so we're going to try to find some fish from the road that we can access shoot them and put them in the back of the truck undo my quiver here make sure your tips tight that is a nice goldfish oh. <laughs> Aim low. Nice shot, B. <laughs> yeah. You want to back up? Oh, look at my reel. <laughs> got a pull. Oh, you got a good hit on it. You got a good hit. Tighten your drag just a little bit. I can get up. Alright. Just, here, hold this. Oh, 
Grab hold of your girl there. Pull it up to the road. Uh oh, it's coming off. Uh, it's gonna slip off. Fall in. Dang. Dang it. Sorry about that. It's okay. That's what happens when I shoot fish. I tried to stick it back in, but it just didn't work. Oh, I'm in him. I didn't think I got him. I need a backup on this one. I'm a low hit. I need a backup. Let's hit me. All right. Yep, it is. That's good. It's one of two because I got a belly shot on this one, and that's a lot of weight to pull up the bank. So, good job. All right. Well, there you go. Cool fishing on a budget. <laughs> and a babe. And a babe. Um, Eighty-one dollars and fifteen cents, right there. <laughs> And I'm having fun bow fishing. I mean, come on. How can you not have fun doing this? This is just awesome. Oh, Gavin just shot at one. Uh, I didn't get it, but we're having fun. $81.15. You can do this too for under $100. Right there's proof. Right. All right, the next step is to try out the free bow here that Jeff, Brian, and Tom contributed to. So hopefully we can get into a fish with this one. Somebody got him. You in him? <laughs> We're both in him. <laughs> All right. All right. Bring him up. Oh, yeah. Am I? No, I missed. You got him. I'm in your barbs. Nice shot. Awesome. My, uh, I have a, a major problem here. My epoxy melted. Oh, no. So. Okay, full disclosure here. There's a, there's a couple things about the free bow. Shooting off the shelf, I gotta constantly hold the arrow. And I'm not used to that, because I'm used to having a rest that captures it. So this falls off on me a lot. Um, my epoxy that I put my insert in with, my epoxy didn't hold it all. And in the heat today, in the heat of the truck, now I've got play here. So it hasn't come out yet, but it's, it's a mess, because it, it can move, so I'm having to hold that. But it's usable. I mean, I can hold it here when I get a fish, and that's no big deal, because the whole thing was free. It was at the right price. So um, remember, we have to make compromises if we're doing it on a budget, and we can't have perfect, nice equipment. And so this is something I'll have to address later on today, but I certainly want to get a fish with this bow before I switch back. How could I have any more fun? Maybe with equipment that was holding together. But the free bow, got a carp, all right? Having a great time. How can you have any more fun than this? You know, Rich was telling me he saw somebody post on Facebook last week and they said, you can't bow fish with a regular hunting bow. I can't believe anybody would say that. I mean, you can, if you can shoot an arrow, you can shoot that arrow at anything. A deer, a coyote, a fish, it's no big deal. I so, saw a basketball back there. You could shoot it at a basketball, yeah. So, free bow, and it's a hunting bow. Just want to prove that person wrong because it's a ridiculous statement. You know, when I first started bow fishing back in 1986, um, it was well known if you had an old bow, use it for bow fishing. Now everybody wants a new bow for bow fishing. I just want 
the people out there who can't afford the new bow to know that it's okay to use an old bow, maybe even the oldest, ugliest bow that barely holds together that they can find, and they can still have fun, outdoor adventure, living it up bow fishing. So that's my message there. I'm gonna wrap this one up. I appreciate Jeff and Brian and Tom all contributing to this project. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just having a lot of fun. A lot of fun putting it together. I'm gonna switch to some other gear now and uh, enjoy the rest of my day. But I hope you found this informative. I hope it was helpful toward you. I hope it was inspiring in some way. And uh, I guess with that, we'll wrap this one up. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.